I got into wine um, from a standpoint of uh, I started in, in you know in the music industry and about 2004 things really started changing mp3.com came in Napster came in and took the bottom out of the music industry now most people just complained and hung their jackets up like I'm just gonna go teach like that is a little thing to do um, with no responsibility I mean it's a huge thing to do with a lot of responsibility um, others would uh, others just change careers because you you went from making lots of money in my business checks coming in at six figures a month going to five figures a month right at four figures a month and I'm in the point at the, the lower end of the five where I'm like, we gotta make a change fast. So I started thinking about things that are very important. When we talk about marketing, and we'll go back through this. Um, what, is, what is marketing? How you exhibit yourself to something. Nope. The way you get your audience to receive what you're trying to sell? No. So we're already learning something today. Like, well, wait a minute. I thought that was marketing. That's how people use the term marketing, but that's not marketing. You all not necessarily selling something. But say again. It's not necessarily selling something. Okay, so you, that's another. Do you want to talk about sales? That's like a whole other. It's a whole different thing, right? Or is it? I thought it was, but I guess not. Thought it was what? The same or similar. Okay, so why did you think it was similar? Um, I don't know, when I think of marketing, I just think about like putting something up obviously on the market and the reason why you're putting it on the market is to sell it so that people can have it. Um, I guess that's just the way my mind. Because when, when we talk about it, we're talking about them together most of the time. Uh-huh, which is improper. I'm just letting you know that from an NBA perspective, and I'm just going to assume that you all are. And that's what we're going to do here that you're looking at sales and marketing as the same thing they are not let's go deeper so sales might be closer to what you're talking about which by the way there are three components to every company right the first is as you said sales and marketing but they are not the same what is sales then If I said what you said wasn't marketing, and that sales and marketing are different, and we're talking about sales and marketing, then what is sales? You're going to get it, because you said it. <laughs> what is sales? Um, would it be what I said the first time? Which is what? No, you don't. Um, do you think I'm going to let you get away with that? Does anybody in here think that I'm going to let her get away with it? No, no, you can answer later. Do you think I'm going to let you get away with that? No, sir. No, exactly. <laughs> so, what did you say? Um... Putting something. You said it before that. The way your audience receives something. Well, now you're getting into marketing. Wait a minute. Because <laughs> one, you said to put yourself out there in the market. You said to exhibit yourself, right? And which is at the same time to advertise yourself, right? So those are components of sales. So things like starts with a P. Promotion. So we have promotion. We have this is my major back there in the corner. Starts with that. Huh? Advertising, yep. Advertising. What else? What about the thing they don't teach in school anymore, which is sales? Picking up the phone and hand-to-hand -hand combat engagement of your consumer. Hey, this is what I have to offer. Don't you want to buy it? It's not just advertisement. Some of the stuff in sales is actually picking up the phone, using the networking that you've created, or the network opportunities out of networking that you've created, to get people to convert into customers. So, sales is the 
conversion of targets into what? Starts with a C. Consumers. We're going to get back to my question of why I got in the wine, but we, we're going the long way. Cool? Okay. So, if sales is the conversion of targets into consumers, what is marketing? The audience identifying uh, attributes of these targets. I will say of the targets. When I say targets, I mean target, let me be specific, target markets. So is sales and marketing the same thing? No, but they're very closely related. They go hand in hand. If you don't have one, you don't have the other because you don't know what you're selling, right? And if you know who your target audience is and you don't go engage them, you don't have any money. So when the, when the target, when it changed in, in 2004 and we had Napster and we had mp3.com and we had iTunes, that came in and did have, you know, uh, 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 the, um, I forget what they used to call that thing where you couldn't download it. I'll think of it later. But, you know, they had the restrictions on your ability to download and then they took those off. And people could get your music anywhere and YouTube and streaming them. <clears throat> if you made money selling music, you needed to come up with a new way very fast in order to figure out how to stay in business. So, I started looking at my who? My who? Or my consumers, right? So target markets, we'll put equal sign here, consumers. And saying, okay, so I'm a jazz guy, and this is ooh, 13 years ago already. So, young, Jazz piano player, kind of good looking, funny. <laughs> Who's my number one target demographic? That's coming to my concerts all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or my age. Yeah, we, we just gonna, I, 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 women, how about that, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you can break it down and you can say women, you can say my age, a little bit older one way or the other, right? And, um, but, but the, the idea was, okay, so if I know that this is my target, then what do I want to know about them? Everything. I want to know everything about my target market. And it doesn't end with, once I figure it out, it's like funny. <clears throat> I was in San Francisco doing wine business last week, and there was a sign when I landed in LAX that said a true fact about the Golden Gate Bridge is that they never stop painting it because when they get through painting one side, they have to start back at the beginning and start painting it all over again, right? That, bless you, that's marketing and understanding your consumer market. It never stops, ever, because demographic you know, trends change, you know, people talk about these big groups, Generation X, Generation Next, Millennials, da 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 And then you have to find, you have target markets, and we're going to go into this deeper. I'm just answering this question the long way. But you have these target markets, and then you have segments within these markets. So you have men, women, geographic, you know, demographic information, where they went to school, all that, then for me in my business with what I have to offer, you know, in music and things like that, you know, you have things like where they experience music, or oh, at jazz festivals, oh, at a jazz club. Okay, at home while they're cooking. At home with friends by the pool, whatever. With their girls at book club. 
What kind of goes good with each one of those? Yeah, you, see, you, you said it better than I did, right? You said alcohol, right? What are women's number one, or what is women's number one alcoholic beverage of choice? Wine. A dude who likes wine, who plays jazz, and all the places in which my consumer market likes to, to go, right? Easy access. I'm playing in front of tens of thousands of people at a time. You know, sometimes less, sometimes more, right? And then, and then I have this thing where, wait a minute, I'm reading an article one day, and this is how my brain works, and when you get out of this class, where I want you to be, right? Which is, I'm reading an article about, in an advertisement about a group, or a company called Crushpad. Crushpad is in Fast Company Magazine all the time, they used to be, and they were in Inc. And it was this company where you could go and create your own bottle of wine, our own barrel of wine. So you go out to San Francisco, you put your likes in, they, they you know, take the lime and the coconut, really grapes and other stuff, and they, they shake it all up, right? So you come up with your different varietals, and then you have a barrel. So coming out of Howard, I'm looking at it and saying, hmm, well, if they can have a whole barrel, then I can have a whole vineyard. Because we just think that way. We don't think in terms of mediocrity. If you can have a barrel, I'm going to have the vineyard. I'm going to figure it out. Well, Marcus, what do you know about the wine business? Absolutely nothing, but I'm going to figure it out. The first dude that, you know, the, the Wright brothers in the beginning didn't know anything about flying, but they figured it out with less money than the dude that had all the money from the government. They figured it out. That's what we do here. But you are always thinking so that when I'm reading the article, that, that's me finishing the Golden Gate Bridge. Ooh, like the idea of the barrel. But let me start again. Whew, I like the idea of having my own wine brand. And by the way, where can I market it? Everywhere I play and on everything I do because who's my target market? Say it again. What's their number one alcoholic beverage choice? Strategically connected. Strategically fun. Strategically in line with things I like to do. So I just finished my first book, one of the books, by the way, on your, you know, required list, right? It's for the love of. What's the name of my brand? Which means? So what was one of the places I said that those young ladies would get together and meet? Drinking what? <laughs> Listening to what? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, right? Ray, hold on, hold on, right? I mean... I mean, now do you get it? It's really not that hard. If you take the time to paint the bridge and learn the lessons this time, so that when you come back, you're not met necessarily putting the same paint on or painting the same way. It's how did you learn the new method of making this thing work? <clears throat> so for me, life is about cycles, okay? It's linear from beginning to end, but in between all of those, you have these cycles. And I have a model that we created, and I say we always, that's me and uh, God, and I was given this, D-E-P-E-L-L, -L, the Pell. So in a cycle, what is the first thing that you need to do in a life cycle? Starts with a D. Oh, you, you already, I mean, it's, you developing straight out? Hmm. Hmm. What do you do when you're driving down the street some days? Dream. Dream. You got it, yeah. Wait, have you ever, I mean, do, wait, where, where, do, where do most of your best ideas come from? Right? You shower? Yeah, hey, hey, I'm not laughing at you, right? Because I wish, and I've thought about it, I'm not even going to say it because we'll put it out there. Let's put it out there. A device where you could just record or write, you know what I'm saying, on a piece of paper that didn't crumble up or something in the shower. Do you know how many ideas, how many billion dollar ideas are lost as soon as the towel comes out because then you start facing and jumping back into life? Like, I'm a guy. I have my, if I have it here. I just took it out. I had it here earlier. But my, my, uh. This is one of my success lists. 
because I just get a piece of paper, nothing fancy, and you know I can barely read it, so I know you don't know what it says, right? <laughs> but the thing is, though, it keeps me guided. But everything starts with this whole idea of your dreams. And dreams, I mean, like, things that you value. I mean, things that are important to you. You know, like school, like education, like going to law school. And knowing that you're doing the things that you're doing for you. When those people called me up at Georgetown and they were like, yo, MJ, you have not taken any interviews. And I was like, I sure haven't. You saw how I stood up? I sure haven't. I got my own game plan that I'm going to live out. And have I gotten my butt almost murdered, figuratively speaking? Uh-huh. I pledged, you know what I'm saying, here. Good old Alpha Phi Alpha, right? That pledging, or whatever you want to call it, intake, this, that, and the other. I'm talking about stuff like that. But you know what I'm saying? That's nothing. The stuff you deal with every day when you walk out of here and how people are going to look at you, if you don't know where you're going and you don't have a dream and that you can't get to every second, there are going to be some times where you're going to have tears in your eyes. You're going to see grown men in a corner somewhere crying because they can't figure this thing out. But you know what gets you back? Your dreams and your values the things that you hold dear to your heart, the things that make you tingle in your tummy and give you butterflies. That's what works. That's what makes a difference. So dreaming, once you have a dream, you have your values, and you want to do something, what are you going to do next? Execute two, two steps down. Keep that one in mind. There's another E up there. I want you to make sure that you take account of your environment. Why do you care about your environment? Since you since you said you were going to Miss San Francisco, LA, USC, um, you said you were going to say that, right? Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Why why is that important? To be in LA for me? No, no, no. In the environment. There. Well. Just your environment in general. Okay. Why is your environment important? Yes. Personally, for me, in order for me to like excel or progress in any situation, I need to be comfortable finding an environment that makes me uncomfortable. I'm not going to be able to focus on what I need to focus on and get me to where I need to go. Because environments can break you, you know, uh, build you up or break you down, yeah. right? Yes. Um, environment's important because you need to be around things that are adding to your progression. You can't be around people who aren't doing the same thing that you're doing or, or even trying to get somewhere as that's on a level that you're trying to get. Like I had friends um, that I grew up with that I just can't talk to anymore just because it's depressing and it's like, it, it's stagnant and I can't be around people who are stagnant anymore. It's, yes. It's not helping me. Exactly. Exact, two correct answers, yes. Conversely, um, what you said, I feel like uh, environment is what humbles you. It's, it, it shows you from Definitely, which comes into the dreaming phase, and I'll just give you, well, no, I'm not going to give you, but you, you keep that one, and we'll come back to you on where I really think that comes in, because environment definitely can do that, but in the terms and context that we're talking about here, it's like a seed, right? So a seed isn't really necessarily looking at, you know, from whence it's come, a seed is fertile ground. 